Let's get her done. Get how's, her done. How's the run been? Nah, pretty good. Pretty good? Yeah, pretty good. Yeah, All sweet. That. I yeah. said you did the... When did you get here? Uh, Thursday night. Did you do... Oh, you, so you got in Thursday night. You didn't do the gong show? Nah, 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 nah. Mate, too good for the gong. Nah, nah. I'm scared of the gong, mate. Yeah, me too. Fucking this place is full like Joe Rogan there, didn't it? Like, Joe Rogan is just like uh, bougie. Mate, mate, you got the Kill Tony show on the Thursday. Mm, yeah, that's like, true. This is, this is the Joe Rogan experience right here, <laughs> isn't it? Well, what do you think about aliens, Alicia? Let's get into Mate, that. Mate, oh, thank God. I thought you were going to ask me about trans women fighting in the <laughs> UFC. I was like, fuck, you better not ask me about it, mate. I'll get I'm too all, real. You know what? You and I are both all for that, and we know. We don't need to come hundred percent. hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. Let them get in. Yep. Let them have a bang. And anything to improve women's sport, mate. You Absolutely. Know, you gotta, you got to get around it. Well, Alicia Caducci, thank you so much. No, no problem, for mate. For being here. Thank you for flying all the way in. Yep. Oh, it was a pleasure. Pleasure to have you gracing our halls in front of our beautiful oh, blue mate. velour curtain. Yep, yep. Yep. Uh, have a guess at how much that curtain costs. Have a stab. Oh, mate. Fuck. I mean, I've seen the Rolexes that go around here. <laughs> Fuck, I'm going to assume like 40K. Yeah. You'd be way under, brother. But uh, oh, yeah, that's nice. all right. You get a few more guesses before <laughs> the interview's over. Um, <laughs> Turns Tell into prices right halfway through. Yeah, exactly. Get out. You got a new car. If you, um, if you <laughs> what, what is what is your heritage, brother? Because I was searching the internet and oh, I yeah. I couldn't pinpoint you down. Where's uh, your papers? Show me your papers, mate. Mate, um, old man's Italian. I'm. Um, oh then, yes, yes. I mean, I suspected, but I didn't want to get yeah, into yeah, mate, if you it's gotta, Sicilian or if it's Italy. Nah, nah. Fuck that. Nah. <laughs> Uh, none of that, mate. None of that. Yeah. Every fucking thing I ever do in this industry is just someone going, so you're Italian. Tell me about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, of course. Oh, please. Yeah, yeah. Let's get into the ends of that because that yeah, defines yeah. you. Yeah, 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 mate. Um, you haven't uh, had an experience outside of this. I haven't had an experience outside of this country, mate. Yeah. Right? <laughs> I'm what? true blue as they come. Well, that's what I wanted to get into as well because your latest show is You Think You're Better Than Me. Yeah, yeah. Did that at the comedy festival. Yeah. Yes. And which, I mean, the name alone, like that really jumps out at me. I'm like, You Think You're Better Than Me. And yeah. you have one of the greatest comedy posters I've seen in a long time. Oh, thank you. I appreciate with you, that. With you uh, as like a windshield cleaner at the traffic lights. Yep. With the bottle. It was great. I mean. Thank you. Tell me a little bit about what that what that show was about, man. Because as a punter, just seeing it, seeing the poster, seeing the name, I was I was already intrigued. Oh, basically, look, the show was fucking full restarted, all right? Because, like, <laughs> see, I don't want to, I don't know, I wanted to try and do, because, like, basically, I feel small, yeah? Okay. And I'm a small guy, mm -hmm. and I was thinking, like, man, you got to do something that jumps out at people, you got to do something interesting, you know what I mean? Arts festival, uh -huh. you got to come in, you can't just tell jokes, yeah? So what I did was, I got a drummer, and then he was doing, like, jazz drums in between the, the sets and then in, also in between the sets I'd get a guy a big Samoan bloke that does open mics I got him to be the poet so he just read out be the, the poet he'd be my poet so I started off look I start, I, I did it like I think when the, um, the first like four shows I did I realised now nah, people don't understand <laughs> the whole concept there's too much going on you walk in there's a guy playing drums you're like what the fuck is this I did it in like a cupboard shed band it was like it was. I could cram I crammed like 35 in there on a good night but if I had five it felt like it was for five people you know what I mean you gotta you gotta sell yourself accurately you know what yeah, I mean of course and then like so you'd come in and just be a guy playing drums and then I'd get this Samoan guy come out. Sometime, I think halfway through when OJ died, I got him to wear a balaclava at the start and then play like an OJ tribute. You know, play that, what was that song, you know? It's been a long day without, without you, my friend. friend. Yeah, oh, yeah. yes, yes, yes. Play that out. Rest in peace, OJ. Oh, 100%. Greatest <laughs> athlete. Think about it. Who else has yes. been concurrently mm. top of the film industry mm. and Airplane. and ath athletics you know what yeah, i mean yeah, yeah absolutely um fucking running gun whatever the fuck the naked gun naked gun there yeah, you the go yeah, yeah there you go <laughs> he, he was the running gun <laughs> <laughs> oh mate, running gun driving gun f1 whatever He's nascar v8 mate he does it all so man you're getting outside the box that's that's what i'm getting of is you don't yeah. like to you don't like to come at people with with the with the straight Hackery, you like to get outside the box and oh. give a unique experience. I've seen some of your stuff yeah, online yeah. and you seem to like just whatever's unique and what's real in the moment. You know, you've got some yeah. great crowd work stuff, but it's never, you don't like, it just seems like you don't like to just be conventional. You're like, nah, nah, we gotta, we gotta oh, do something a little bit different. Yeah, because you, you try to do that, don't you? You try to be like, oh, be a little different, that'll be good. Of and course, then, yeah. and then you're doing it and then you do it at, you know, doing it at the club. And then sometimes it's like, oh, mate, it's genius what you're doing. And then other times it's like, can't. <laughs> What the fuck was that? Like, this is the like, fuck, man. Like, there's been some horror shows. You go out to a footy club, they give you, you know, you get, you get Please, 15 Please tell minutes. me some of these. People love hearing the bomb stories. Oh, I, I got, and, and, and 
I full salute you because going out on a limb look I'm a little bit more physical so sometimes mm. when I'm doing the act outs and you're bombing mm. it hurts a little bit more yeah. but if you've got a Samoan slam poet and yeah. someone drumming and you doing weird shit that, the, that bomb would just feel like out of this world so yeah. tell me about oh, it like I don't like I'm not doing that all the time like that was just purely about no, like, of course, an art festival of course, I'll do yes, that like yes. standard I'm just doing bits and that you know mm-hmm. what I mean but like you know we were doing this um, there was a shocker gig we did this gig that was like five hours out of uh, Victoria so it was I mean out of Melbourne sorry so it was like on that South Australia Victoria border oh, around yeah. there and then we drive all the way out there. You know, like you drive so far, you start, it's like not it, like cars die on the side of the road. You know what I mean? Like it's like no one's ever fixing that. That thing's fucking done. But fucking like we're out there and then it's a horror gig, yeah? Mm. Like it was, it was like a, mate, it was one of those shanty pubs. You know what I mean? Okay. Like one pub town, but it's not really a town. It's just like there's yeah. like a hundred farms around it. This is where we're all going to meet up. Right. And then oh. we're like the event for the month or whatever. And, um... So, you know, there's about 50 people, probably a smaller hall than this. And then there's this guy in the front. All the lights are off, you know what I mean? It's like this. You can't really tell who the fuck's heckling you. There's someone in the front left, and they're heckling the fuck out of everybody. Right. They won't shut the fuck up. And no one's policing this. Oh, no one's really policing it, because they're just like, you get on with the show, mate. You know, yeah, you're yeah. up there. And then the host is on, and he's up there. He's a good com- really good comedian, and he's fucking trying to sort it out. He's organized the whole show. And the guy won't shut the fuck up. Eventually, and he's a pretty clean comic, and he's pushed him to the point where he's going like, "Oh, shut the fuck up! You're fucking restarted." You know what I mean? Yes, yes, yes. And he keeps going. Oh, I get on, and I'm like, "Mate, fucking hell! You got to shut the fuck up!" You know, you slam him a couple of times, then you think like he's just gonna keep going. Yes. No one's gonna tell him to get the fuck out. Yeah. There's nothing I can really do. It, you know, I had to do ten minutes, and then you go through that first three, and then eventually you're just going like, "I'll just." push through this yeah steamroll it steamroll just go through it ah, most of them are enjoying it we'll just have to ignore him that's all we can do now another person gets up same thing again and then there's someone in the back and they're going like mate you did a good job there fucking hell mate his parents shouldn't have been allowed to breed I'm like what the fuck do you mean oh mate wait till they turn the lights on and then this guy was just like a full incest baby Oh, no. Yeah. No. Yeah. You could visually see it. Yeah. You could see the inbreed. Yeah. So what, can you describe this, this oh, person? Oh, mate, like, you know where your eyes are meant to be? <laughs> they weren't where they were meant to be. Like, mate, it was fucked. Like, man, and, he, and then you just got the hosts up there being like, I oh, fucking called him restarted. Yes. Oh, like, it's, mate, it was... Oh. He thought he was watching TV. He, he didn't even know there was oh. a show. He, <laughs> oh, yeah. he was trying to change the channel. He's like, mate, why isn't it working? Oh, mate, it was brutal. And then, wow. like, someone comes up to me, like, one of the people, no, one of the publican or someone comes up to me and he's just like, mate, oh, you know, he's a menace. But you know what the best thing about him is? He'll do the work of 10 sheep shearers, but you don't have to pay him <laughs> the price of one, mate. You're like, fuck. It's like, I think Dan said it was like reverse NDIS. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's like, fucking brutal, cunt. It's fucking brutal. And, what mate, is this town? <laughs> the hills have eyes. Man daily, brother. <laughs> Going wow. out this poor town, mate. It was fucking shocking. Like, you know, you go on like one of those long drives, you like, cunt, there hasn't been anything worth looking at <laughs> for three hours. Like, the person who told me, like, yeah, go, guys, get up in the car, meet us there. We'll bang a gig out there. We'll bang another one out, fucking hour away or something. And we're yeah. like, yeah, all right. He's like, mate, enjoy looking at the silos. They're bloody beautiful. <laughs> Not ironically, you know what I mean? Just, I love looking at a couple of silos. Some of, of the best silos in all of South Australia. Some of the best. They've got murals on them, mate. They're so fucking beautiful. This is what I want to know as well, because people do say these band gigs, you, you learn from them, you grow. I mean, what are you? how are you growing from that gig? Some gigs are so no. bad, you can't grow from it. No. You've just wasted your time. No, I got paid. Oh, yeah, sure, sure, <laughs> sure, sure. <laughs> but, I mean, in those situations, how do, you, how do you improve from that, you know? What do you build from that? Nah, What's the next gig? Nothing. Yeah. Nothing. If you go up there, you didn't die, you go, all right, that's it. That and was then, it. Yeah, that's it. Like, yeah. you're not really going to learn anything from I, that. I abused an inbred guy at the end. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> you, sure. just, you just go, like, all right, yeah, okay. I'll live with this shame for the rest of my that's life, good, and man. that's it. Well, I, I want to know as well, because I like to know... Uh, comics in the industry who mm. you look up to and stuff like that. I saw online you seem to have a bit of a special relationship with James McCann. For my money, one of the best comedians oh, yeah. in Australia. Tell me about your relationship with him and, and w- w- what's the go? Did uh, you, early on in your career, you guys met. What happened there? Oh no, nah, I was in COVID. I was posting up a lot of videos that were probably pretty restarted, and yep. then he was taking a likening to that. And then we're hanging out. He did my podcast. I do this podcast where um, I'd get someone to sit on a forklift, and then we'd interview him. Okay. Yeah, working man's Game of Thrones chair, you know what I mean? Like oh. Iron Throne, you know what I mean? Yep. And fucking, yeah, I don't know, we're just hanging out and then let's get along. And then eventually he thought it would be funny to be like, I'll be your manager and I'll book you for gigs, I'll take a cut. And then that was basically the running joke. And so is he today? Mate, he, he, it's either he's my manager or Wolfie. 
They're fighting over. Oh you know my what I mean? goodness! I got, I got two dads. <laughs> Fucking, it's twenty twenty four. You got to get used to that shit. You know what I mean? I, I think the, I think the inbred guy had better parents. Yeah. I think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he had better management. Than you. <laughs> That's that, tough. Yeah, that's it's fucking it's pretty good. That's good. No, it's good. No, nah, he's helped me out. He's, he's he's great. He's really helped me out a lot. Yeah, like, um, well, what is it about some of these greats, man? Like these people who work because obviously we've all got our own style. Mm-hmm. What do you think? Like a common theme with all great comics is what do you think, man? I genuinely think you got to find why you're restarted. Yes, okay. You know what I mean, that's yeah, what, your gem. What's, what's weird about you? What's off about you? Oh. Man, that's the whole thing. I'm trying to figure it out. I know mm. sometimes it's obvious and then sometimes it's not. And then that's the whole thing. I think yeah. finding out why you shine as a full restart yep. is the gem inside you that you, the world needs to see. You know what I mean? Yes, okay. Like think about everybody that's like actually like doing it and they got something that's like, they, you know, they got a fan base or they just, whenever they're talking, they're able to have that gravitational pull. There's something about them yes. that without a microphone and a stage makes them a freak. But that's the thing that's making them explode at the time. You know okay, what I mean? Okay, yeah, okay. That's interesting. I've, I've never heard that answer. Like, think about, like, you know, even cunts that just all they talk about is pussy on stage. They're just, right. they're just ridiculously horny, yeah? And if you were just talking to that cunt at the pub, you'd be like, cunt, you've got to get away from me. I can <laughs> yeah. feel it poking my leg. You know what I mean? But on stage, you're like, this is this On is stage, quite it's like, yeah, there's a little bit nuance to this, actually, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I've never thought about fucking how much shit I would eat just to fucking get a whiff of her asshole. No, that's actually really interesting there. Yeah, hey. Okay, so you're seeing you know about I mean? that individuality, that doubling down on what makes you different, what makes yeah. you weird, and then go, f- go yeah. from there. Yeah. Yeah, it's okay. Well, I mean... Look, but in day-to-day conversation, you're a freak. You're a nightmare. Well, yeah. that is true. Some of the best artists in the world, you see them and you're like, you would be a horrendous hang. Yeah. You would be just... I could not yeah. bring you home for dinner yeah. to hang out with the wife, you know? Mm. Like, it'd be tough. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's good, man. Well, what, what's some of the goals you set early on in your comedy career when you started? How long have you been doing stand-up, first of all? Uh, like between seven, eight years. Yep. Yeah. And what were some of the goals that you set early on when you started versus goals that you have now? Oh, I reckon... <laughs> I, no, you, no, you start off basic. You're like, I just want to be able to do five minutes. Yes. Then you do that. Then you're like, I'm actually the best. <laughs> and then you find out you shit again. And then you do that for about four years. And then, I don't know. I, just, I was just always doing spots. I never really had like bigger idea than just like I just want to get better at this get better at this get better at this but then like I don't know at the minute I'm kind of in this position where I've thought like well I've been the past year I've been thinking like I'm, I've got to do something like I've got to do something insane i got to do a big shift for myself okay you know and like um, I'm a Melbourne guy I've been my whole life from northern suburbs but then I was just thinking like I want to change it up so then like end of July I'm going to move to the UK I had some mates do that move they've enjoyed it Yep. I'm like, just try it out, something different. You know what I've I mean? just heard, yeah, the UK is just Melbourne on steroids anyway. It's the same, yeah. same weather, same sort yep. of shtick. Yeah, yep. nice. And so yeah, that's that's in July, did you say? End of July, yeah. End of July. Yeah. Oh man, so this is like the last month with us. Yeah, yeah. So this was um actually this only happened because um fucking me and Wolfie were talking and he was like, Man, man, you've been in the lounge, man, how was it, man? I went like I was alright, man, but no one to party or anything. He's like, Man, that's not WA, man. I'm like, you got to bring me down with Rosario then, mate. So I could tee up the trip. And then it was like a month of him saying, I'm tearing it up. And then we didn't even know it was happening. Then and he's pulled it off. He pulled it off and eventually got something. My God, he is a good manager. He's, he's, actually, he's, he's actually made it happen. 100%. In WA, he can do stuff. Yeah, that's every true. Every other state. He's a bit of a mover and shaker. <laughs> and then he's banned from every other major venue in the country. <laughs> oh, that's great, man. Well, listen, listen, what's some of the advice you had early on? Because it seems like you were just doing your thing and people are... Noticing it and admiring sort of what you're mm. doing as you're going and going. Because I think that with stand-up comedy, a lot of people start to see the tricks. If you do it for a bit, you start to see, okay, yeah, yeah, they, yeah. they're doing this, they're doing this style, they're good at that. And you can admire it. But what comics after a while start to really admire is someone just being authentic and honest on yeah, stage yeah, yeah, with whatever yeah. they're doing. So was that something that was advised to you or has that been something that you've always felt that you needed to do? Um, no, nah, I don't know. I never really had that much... I don't feel like I've had that much trouble just like letting it go on stage. You know yeah. what I mean? I felt really comfortable expressing myself on stage, especially at like, you know, shitty gigs, you know, any 20 people, you go, I'll just do whatever. This is good. Like when once, like that was such a, that's such a good feeling. You know what I mean? When you, mm. when you go like, oh, this gig that when you're starting out, it's like, this is important. And then it actually means nothing to you. If you just bombed your guts out for eight minutes, be like, oh, who gives a fuck? Everyone here is like, yeah, it's all good. Whatever. Yes. You know what I mean? You got the pass now. When you get the past to just bomb your guts out, mm. that's when I think you actually get to have like a little more creative freedom. Yeah, the but flow like, comes because the stakes aren't too high. Yeah, so you yeah. actually just chilled out. Whereas like, you know, you do a gig where it's like, oh no, this is important. I should do well. You, I feel like you're a more stale version of yourself. Like, if, like especially let's say, like you did the lounge last week, yeah? Yes. So then like that first week, like 
maybe like or Thursday or something. Did you feel how much more comfortable did you feel though? With, you know what I mean? Versus the Tuesday and stuff. Tuesday, Wednesday, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, absolutely, man. Tuesday, yeah, Wednesday, you settle you're going, in. You're yeah, like, oh, you're like this works. first right. impressions. This is important. Oh, 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 oh. Like especially when you get a club run, when you get like, now nah, you can do like five spots. You know I mean, that's at least nice because like by the third or the fourth, you at least get to be like, Find okay, I can fuck around with it now. I can actually do what I'd normally do. Yes, as opposed right. to being like, oh, I'm gonna be a bit of a robot. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. But like, I reckon actually the best advice I've got was probably to inside baseball, but like someone once talked, cause I used to think like, no, you got to show, like you do the gig again and then you got to show the promoter and the booker that like, no, I've actually got more minutes. Like you can actually, I've got actually so much range. And I remember someone telling me like, no, just do the thing that they booked you to do. Yes. At the end of the day, there's a bit of a job element to this. You're yes. just a, somewhat of a tradie, just rock up and then like, oh, he's doing that thing. Now oh, this thing's good. Yeah. And if it doesn't work, they're going to be like, oh, it doesn't matter. I think it's good, blah, blah, yes. blah. You know what I mean? Show them you're a consistent product. Yeah. Like be that just professional element. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Which is yeah, something yeah. that no one ever really drills into you. Like, no, we're always trying to just express ourselves and yeah. show that we're the big yeah. dog. We, we've got it all to go. Be the best hang. Be all this. And then like, you know, but then sometimes it's a bit like just bring it in a bit. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely, man. Mm. Oh, that, that is good advice. That's sweet. Mm. Well, um, where can people find you on the socials, man? Alessio Carducci, just, is that yep. yours? That's me, man. You nailed That's it. That's me, man. I got that name. <laughs> you nailed it. Not yeah. even Alessio Carducci won. Nah, nah, nah. Mate. I didn't have that Tom Smith problem. You know what I mean? <laughs> but it's all worked out for me, brother. So Alessio Carducci on the <laughs> socials. Um, I know, like we said, you think you're better than me was the last show. Have mm-hmm. you got a new show in the works? Yeah, I got this show. I reckon it'll be all right. Where I'm, what I'm going to do is... Um, cause what, oh, that's what I, I like the idea of it's like it's an arts festival mm-hmm. then you just fuck around with it a bit mm. cause the, the drummer and everything the whole thing was meant to be a piss take like I, I got this one I reckon would be funny where you just do a normal show for like 40 minutes and I want to have an art easel and I just want to keep pretending I'm painting on it whatever okay. and then pretend I'm painting whoever's in the front row and constantly make a little bit of a jab at it and then in the end just massive dick and balls <laughs> okay. and every, th- show. <laughs> every show every <laughs> show <laughs> is it a different dick and balls each uh, how, time? How good would be, but how, yeah, that, that'd be actually pretty good. You get like a curtain, yes. and then at the end of the show, I pull it back, and then it's just all wow. the dick and balls, man. The final show. Yeah. Extra charge because you got mm, the, the not big cause dick. because it's an art gallery now. Or the big dick review. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> yeah. Or the last show, you do like a fucking Oprah giveaway. Everyone's got one under their thing. You get a dick and balls. You get a dick and balls. (laughs) (laughs) What? Where do we sign up? This is incredible. Oh, man, man. I mean, I... I, I, $20 tickets if you buy them, but there'll be promos. (laughs) (laughs) Alessio Carducci, ladies and gentlemen. There he goes. Thank you, everybody. That was so great. Thanks, man. (laughs)